Hey everyone, what is going on? It is Brian and we are back. And today we are taking a look at the new Pursuit United Rye. So the folks at Bourbon Pursuit, they have been putting out whiskey under the Cecil Coleman Pursuit line. They've done some Pursuit series, single barrel releases, and they've done a couple of batched products. A few of them were bourbons. And now we're taking a look at their first go at a rye whiskey. This is a marriage of three different recipes, Sagamore's 52% rye, along with their 95% rye, and Bargetown Bourbon Company's 95% rye. And this is 108 proof, so we're hoping that it drinks rich, um, but otherwise, it's not overly hot on the proof, it's not overly low on the proof. And right away on the nose, what you're getting is a ton of brown sugar. You're getting a ton of sweetness. It has a dense kind of cakey sweetness to it. It seems to, alongside of these caramel notes, have an overabundance of fruit as well, sitting on the top of that. It's like a, a glazed donut with a raspberry drizzle. Specifically here in Louisville, they open up a place called Duck Donuts. And all of these are cake-based donuts. They're naturally sweet. And uh, there's one that I really like that's a glazed donut. And it has like a drizzle of marshmallow fluff as well as raspberry. And honestly, it's really similar to what you get on the nose of this. You're, you're getting maple, that brown sugar I already mentioned. Soft break bread, a tiny bit of anise. Uh, it lingers the more the glass is open to this kind of like birch beer or root beer quality, but it's not overly piercing. It's very sweet, like the vintage type colas. Not a lot of burn on the nose. Good honey sweetness coming in. Very inviting. A lot of sugars, a lot of sweet flavors all around. And some dark fruits in there as well. Let's go ahead and dive into the palate for the first go. And the palate has this, what I call that wine-soaked grape, that sort of boozy, old-fashioned like um, Luxardo cherry type sweetness. What we've mentioned before, maybe in um, the the Willet Rye, the Madeira finished Willet Rye that we talked about, um, these nice brandy cherry notes. Again, with the, the surge of ginger beer, um, vintage cola, a lot of caramel sits on the palate, a lot of caramel sits on the tongue. A nice honeyed note that sort of lingers on the palate. It almost reminds me of the starlight honey finished rye in that way that it has this nice sweet honey note that lingers. As you chew on the palate more, it has these kind of denser graham cracker, honey, maple notes come out some more. Again, with a little bit of ginger bite, it has just a slight bit of that kind of spearminty mintiness that you usually look for in a rye, but it isn't all that much. I think my first thoughts when I had this were how close would it be to the Nashville Barrel Company small batch. Because you have, if you've seen my review on that one, notice I talked about it having kind of some stone fruit, some orchard fruit, kind of a bright pop of fruitiness. And while it does have those fruit flavors in the Nashville Barrel Company, compared to this one, the Nashville Barrel Company has a lot more spice and mint driven nature that you don't necessarily notice it until you put it up against a pour like this one that seems to lean more maybe into um, some of the, kind of the flavor pocket you get out of Pikesville. Mid sip, after you kind of acclimate the palate, you get a little bit of those peachy tones. You get a little bit of grape notes. You get some kind of popping sweetness there in the middle in a fruit way. But I think the most impressive thing about this pour to me is the way that it lingers. And if you let it sit on the tongue for just a couple of minutes, it goes with this minty vanilla linger 
for quite some time, but then you meet this really herbal, not grassy in a negative way. It has this unique finish to it that I feel like I've noticed before in like the Saz 18 rye. It's definitely kind of an herbal, uh, grassy tone that I've pulled out of the Michter's US 1 rye. And for me, that's a positive attribute. It's a flavor that isn't quite oaky, but it's such a unique earthiness that for my particular palate, a palate that when drinking bourbons generally leans towards um, some of the oak characteristics, some of the, maybe some of the earthy characteristics too. This pour, for being a rye, has a lot of really nice sweet points. It is balanced with some rye spice in there as well, but then the lasting finish of it has something that is just unique and uncommon and not come by with a lot of pours at all. Continuing even further as the palate acclimates, you do start to get this cooked or stewed cinnamon apple note, like a cinnamon apple streusel or a cinnamon apple baked something. You get some pops of citrus in there as well, but it's a little hard to tell what's like a citrus acidity versus what's this sort of green apple-like acidity. There's something that's a little bit more piercing, uh, but it definitely has a saturation that is kind of stewed fruit and a little bit of cinnamon and ginger, kind of clovey spice to complement it the more it goes as well. All right, guys, I have been thoroughly impressed with the Pursuit United Rye. This is a bottle that at my local in Louisville, Costco is about $55, $56. At other stores that I've seen it in, it's anywhere between 60 and 65. So you're talking about a 55 to $65 bottle. Again, it puts it in the range with Nashville Barrel Company, with the Stellum. And I think I recall saying that the Stellum rye is definitely a rye drinker's rye, and there will be complexities that come out for a rye drinker. Um, this particular bottle, I feel like, is approachable for any one person. If you are looking for a really good product and you want something new, this would be one of the next things I suggest picking up. It's got a lot of sweetness that's gonna appeal to the bourbon drinker. It doesn't particularly have a lot of age, but again, I urge you to try letting it sit in the palate for a little bit. I think the uh, earthiness, that kind of age, um, whatever that linger is that comes off on the palate is very unique, and I think it will appeal to someone who likes older aged whiskeys in general. And then it does have plenty of rye characteristics for someone who does like rye to begin with. Thanks everybody for tuning in. I hope this video is helpful. I hope that you can find a bottle of Pursuit United Rye in your area. I know there was only about 2,000 bottles that were released in this first run. It has already sold out from sealbox.com, so it's not something you're gonna be able to get from there. But there are several markets that it's gonna be going to. I'll link that down below. Hopefully it's something that you all are able to find. If you've tried this rye, let me know what you think down below. I'd love to hear what you all think about this product and love to hear if there's other things you want to want to hear me talk about on upcoming episodes. Thanks so much for tuning in. Again, if you like this content, give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I'm glad that you are here and I hope that the content is helpful to you all. If you want to catch more content, you can do so at the Entry Proof Podcast. That's a podcast that I do with Drew P. Whiskey. He's also here on YouTube and we're live on his channel Thursday nights doing deep dives, talking about our barrel picks, doing blind tastings or any number of things. If you all want to support what I'm doing here on the channel, what Drew's doing on his channel, you could do so at patreon.com slash entry proof podcast. Over on Patreon, I had announced last week, I was doing a sample of the bottle that I reviewed for one of the folks who are at our make it a double and higher members of Patreon. Happy to announce that Fred, you are the winner of the sample. I will shoot you a line and you can give me your information so I can make sure to get the sample of Koi Hill out to you. Until next time, we'll see you all later.